today's topic is blending on draw frame. The first question that comes to our mind is when to use a draw frame for blending. The blending means mixing up two different types of fiber. There is a difference between blending and mixing. In the case of mixing, we mix fibers of which are similar in nature, like we mix cotton fibers. We can mix polyester fibers of different denier together. Well, we can mix acrylic fibers between themselves of two different cross sections. So, when the fibers are of same nature and we mix them together, then the term which is used is called mixing of fibers. But when we try to bring two fibers of different nature, then we use the term blending. Now, blending on draw frame, why should you blend on draw frame? There are two situations when blending on draw frame is preferable. What are those situations? One is when each component of the blend required separate blow room processing lines and separate curding for opening, cleaning and sliver formation. Then it is better that we do not take the fibers to blow room for blending, but we will blend them on draw frame because there is a possibility to bring several slivers together on draw frame and therefore, we can blend the slivers made from different fibers on draw frame. The reason is that fibers being totally different from each other, they need different processing line on blow room with different process parameters. At the same, similarly, they need different process parameters on carding machines. So, in this situations, we prefer to blend the two fibers in sliver form on draw frame. The other is when we, it is required to maintain the blend proportion correctly and mixing homogeneity is not really so important, but maintaining blend proportion is more important. In that situation also, we prefer draw frame blending, because if you bring the slivers together, we can make slivers of a specific count, with little variation in count. And then if we bring those slivers together, then the proportion of the two components or three components, whichever we want they can be maintained with within very narrow tolerance. So, proportion is more important than the real mixing homogeneity between the fibers. In these two situations, draw frame blending is practiced and it is very much uh, in use in the industry. Let us go to the next slide. Draw frame is normally used for binary blend. The required blend proportion is obtained by adjusting two parameters. There number of slivers of each component that we can choose the number of slivers of component suppose A and B, suppose A and B are being mixed together or blend together. The other is other parameter which we can adjust is the linear density or count of each sliver. So, by manipulating count of sliver or their number, we adjust the blend ratio. Generally, two passages of drawing is required for satisfactory mixing. This point is very important because if I give only one draw frame passage, we get narrow strips of the two components 
within a sliver. So if I choose eight slivers and suppose four of them are of component A and another four are of component B and then if we blend them together a single sliver that we produce it will contain four strips, four thin strips of component A and another four thin strips of component B and these strips will be very much visible if the if we use two different colors for the two components. Otherwise, if the color is same then we will not be able to really make the difference, but if I choose one of them to be black the other one is white then we can easily identify the black strips coming from one component and white strips coming from another component. So, the after the first passage we will have eight strips, four of them from one component, another four from another component. So, this is not a really giving me very nice mixing of two fibers, what we do? We go for one more stage that is we take these blended sliver and again process them on another drop frame. So, that each of those trees again they are thinned down another 8 times or 7 times depending upon the draft and the number of doublings that you use. So, now if we again use 8 doubling and 8 draft then in the final sliver we will get 64 total strips coming from 2 different components and therefore, mixing will be better and hence minimum 2 passages are required. If the density of the components also differs too much, then the linear density of the sliver consisting of low density fiber needs to be made little finer. This also is important. See the bulk of the material depends upon the linear density and the dense actual density of the fiber. So, the fiber is made from low density fiber then the sliver bulk is going to be more if the count of two components are same. Suppose one is cotton, the density is 1.52, the another fiber is made from polyester, density is 1.34 or 3.8. So, if I blend them together and both the sliders are of same count, then the sliver made from polyester will look very bulky because density of the fiber is low. Similarly, if we choose the other component to be acrylic, it will be still more bulkier. So, there could be difference in the bulk depending upon the density of the components that we choose. Say in such situation what we do? We adjust the linear density of the sliver made from low density fiber. So, that when they are processed on the machines there is not much difference in their actual bulk or volume of the two components. This is done to ensure that the bulky and non bulky slivers are gripped properly by the drafting roller pairs. Try to imagine that suppose there is a fiber, there is a sliver made from very bulky material and the neighboring sliver is made from not so bulk material. When the both the slivers are gripped between the bottom and top rollers, the part where the bulky material is there and the part where the uh, not so bulky material is there, the bulky material will be gripped firmly because its volume is more. So, its thickness is more and the neighboring material made from the, uh, the other high density fiber will not be gripped properly because its thickness is going to be less. So, thickness differences will make the differences in terms of gripping power of the two com of two rollers on the sliver and therefore, we have to adjust the hank of the slivers. The bulky material 
should be made little less in terms of linear density or they should be made little finer. Now, we come to this part that is sliver disposition in the cream. How do I place the sliver on the creel? Now, here let us say as an example polyester and cotton are blended together. So, the polyester is represented by the blue circles and cotton is represented by the white circles and we are taking 6 slivers and we have to blend them into proportion of 67 33. That means, we will have 4 polyester sliver and 2 cotton slivers and both of them will be of same hang or same linear density. Now, you have 4 of one component and 2 of one another component. How do we arrange the slivers on the krill so that during drafting we get a proper mixing or dispersion of the fibers coming from two different components in the final sliver. Our objective is well dispersed uh, fibers within the cross section of the final sliver. Now, here is a an arrangement shown that is we start with a polyester followed by cotton, then we put two polyester and another cotton and the sixth position is also occupying by polyester. So, therefore, this is how we can place four polyester slivers and two cotton slivers. So, there is a balancing act that is cotton placed between two polyester slivers and if we now drop this material, we will have the strips made from each of those components and these strips will be well placed, well dispersed within the cross section of the final sliver. But in this type of arrangement, sometimes it has been seen that there is a possibility of what is known as cockling of cotton sliver. That is, if sometimes the wave tension draft is reduced to avoid wave stretching, the arrangement shown in A can lead to cockling of the cotton sliver. So, what does it mean cockling? Cockling basically means that we will find the cotton part as the in the wave we will see them, they are forming wavy pattern that if we look at the wave that comes out from the draw frame and you will see that the wave made from the polyester slivers are looks very nice, very uniform while the cotton part is giving you a wavy look. This is what is known as cockling. This is not good from the point of view of dispersion of fibers within the cross section. So, this can be rectified by rearrangement of the cotton sliver by shifting cotton sliver from position 2 to position 1 and position 5 to position 6. Now, we will show them that this is going to be the. So, we will shift cotton, bring it towards the edge and the another cotton also we bringing towards the edge. That means, we place the cotton in the first and the last location and all the polyesters are placed in the middle. So, this is to avoid the cockling phenomena and obviously, there has to be some compromise in this case compromise on the dispersion of the strips within the cross section of the final sliver, but we have to give priority to avoid the cockling 
of cotton saliva. So, this is what is done. So, coupling is eliminated as cotton saliva takes longer path to reach the trumpet. What happens that polyester wave as soon as it comes out from the nip of the draw frame or the nip of the front pair of rollers, they try to retract. So, polyester fibers by nature is much more retractable than cotton. And therefore, when they try to retract, because the neighboring material is cotton, they will try to also pull the cotton along with them. And therefore, what happens? Cotton being placed in the previous case in between polyester, the retraction phenomena of polyester and cottons are different. And therefore, the cotton actually shows little waviness, and we call it coupling. So, this can be avoided by this uh, rearrangement of the slivers in the creel. Disposition for a 50 50 and 33 67 blend. In the 50 50 blend, the disposition is very simple. You see that we have kept the polyester and cotton slivers one after the other. So, the first is polyester followed by cotton, then again polyester, then again cotton, polyester and then cotton. So, this is way if we place the material or the sliver, then there is a balance and uh, the final sliver is going to be quite uh, well blended by the two components. So, this is how it can be done for 50-50 because fortunately, we have same number of sliver of polyester or cotton. If I go for a blend like 3367, where we have 33 percent polyester, that means two polyester sliver, and we have four cotton slivers. In that case, this could be the arrangement. We place both the polyester at the middle and on both sides we can place cotton. In this case, this is one way of balancing the disposition of the slivers. Otherwise, what one can think that if I place the polyester in between uh, in between cotton, then on one side between two cotton I can place one polyester and between the other side two cotton also we can place polyester. So, that is another way also we can uh, do so that uh, there are four cotton slivers between two cotton slivers I can place them like this I can bring it here I can bring this in between these two this could be another arrangement so as to Make ensure that the, the the dispersion of the strips within the final uh, within the cross section of the final sliver is is there. Now, this particular slide means what is written: change in blend proportion with addition of sliver of any one component in the case of 6 sliver blending. Now, when I am blending 6 slivers and assume that all the slivers are of same linear density, that means each sliver is representing 16.6 percent mass right now, okay, because there are 6 slivers. So, all 6 slivers is 100 percent. So, 1 sliver means 100 by 6 which will be 16.6. So, if I take 6 slivers and one of them is a different component, then I have a mixture which is shown at the bottom of this diagram 16.6 is to 83.4 which is close to 17 is to 83. So, I will get a ratio 17 is to 83 if I choose only one sliver of a particular component and the rest five slivers coming from another component. 
if I go for 2 I get a ratio 33 is to 70 as shown. If I choose 3 of one component rest from coming from other component then 3 3 each so I get a 50 is to 50, 50 50 ratio. If I go for 4 I get 66.6 .6 is to 33.3 that is what is very well known blend 67 33 ratio and if I choose 5 of one component and one of another component, I get 83.4, 16.6 that is 83 is to 17. So, by adding one increasing the number of slivers coming from one component, this is how these are the various blends that we can produce. So, 67, 33 and 50, 50 blends are very common and very popular. It is because we, we are trying to double 6 slivers and out of them 6 slivers, if one of them is coming from, one of them is representing 16.6 percent of the total mass. So, this is the steps in which the ratio is going to change as I increase the number of slivers from 1 to 2, 2 to 3. 3 to 4, 4 to 5 and up to 6. So, the steps are 16.6 actually. So, all these steps are going up by 16.6 percent. And when we go for 8 sliver blending and we have made a graph in a similar way, then each sliver in this case is representing 12.5 percent mass. So, now the steps earlier was 16.6 for 8 sliver blending it will be 12.5 and the different ratios that we can generate is shown 12.5 is to 87.5, 25, 75, 37.5, 62.5 that is such 37, 63 ratio, 50, 50 also you can get it here as we were getting previously also we can again get 63, 37. 75, 25, 87, 12.5. These are the various ratio combination that you will get when you use 8 slivers blending, provided the linear density of the component is same. Then only these are the various blend ratio that we can generate. If we want to have any other ratio, then either we have to see suppose if I go for 7 sliver blending total, then each sliver will be representing a mass of 100 by 7, which will be 14 point something. So, this is for 8 sliver blending, this is 12.5, for 7 sliver blending, it will be 14 point. 3 and for previous one for 6 sliver blending is sliver representing 16.6 percent of the mass. So, finer changes are possible if I increase the number of slivers in the blend. So, within this we can vary our blend easily and uh, make different combinations of the two components, but one can also uh, think of uh, no there are there are techniques by which I can generate some other blend ratio by manipulating like this slivers uh, not only in the first passage of the draw frame, but on the second passage also we have we have some scope to change the blend ratio. There also we can if we go for 6 sliver blending, 6 sliver doubling or 8 sliver doubling in the next passage and I can choose some slivers which already have been blended at the breaker stage and I can choose some slivers which have not been blended at all and then again I can bring them together and blend them on the second passage of draw frame. 
and by that way also we will be able to generate some more brain ratios. So, these are the different you know techniques by which we can adjust the blend ratio. The other one which I have not stated is that you can also manipulate the linear density of the sliver and that also gives you scope to adjust or to change the blend ratio. Determination of blend proportion. Both slivers have same linear density, this is the assumption to start with because that will make the case simple. A number of slivers of component A, that was let us say this is N A, a number of slivers of component B is N B and they are to be blended together. So, it is a binary blend. So, blend proportion assuming all slivers of same linear density proportion of P A is going to be N A by N into 100, where N is N A plus N B. So, N is the sum of total number of slivers of component A and component B, sum together of these two components. Generally, N is 6 or it could be 7 or it could be 8, we do not generally go beyond 8 because the machine may not be able to draft so many slivers because drafting force requirement is going to be very high and therefore, we do not go the machine is capable to handle at the most 8 slivers. So, this is how we will be able to find out the blend ratio of one component. If I know the ratio of one component, the other ratio can easily be found out. If I know P A in terms of percentage P B will be 100 minus P A always. So, that way we will be able to find out what is the you know, percentage of, of the components in the blend by from the numbers of the slivers we take. Now, if we take slivers of different linear densities, sometimes and many a time not only sometimes we take slivers of two different linear densities especially when one component is made from fiber which is too bulky in nature and the other component is made from a fiber which is not bulky at all like cotton is not bulky at all whereas acrylic is very very bulky material polyester also could be very bulky. Now, in those cases the linear density of the components may not be same. So, let us say component A linear density is H A and number of slivers chosen is N A. Component B linear density is H B and number of slivers chosen is N B. Therefore, total number of slivers is N A plus N B which is equal to N. So, blend proportion of A we can now easily find out P A is going to be N A H A divided by N A H A plus N B H B into 100. This will give you the proportion of the component A in the final blend. Similarly, P B is going to be N B H B by N A H A plus N B H B into 100. 100 we are doing because we want to express it in percentage. So, this way we can find out P A and P B separately or we can find out one of them first the rest the other one can be found out subtracting the percentage of component A or B from 100. So, if I want to find out P A then P B known. So, P A is going to be 100 minus P B or if the P A is known to us P B will can find it out P B will be 100 minus P A. So, this is how the calculation can be done to find out the blend proportion. So, this is how we blend the fibers on draw frame. Now, we will discuss processing problems. So, you know about the machine, you have understood the process, 
we have discussed all these in the previous lectures. Now, you have fair understanding about the draw frame and process also. Now, we have to understand how to tackle certain problems that we may face and these are known as processing problems. So, there are many problems that we face uh, in an industrial practice and we need to know what are the possible reasons. If we know the reason, then probably we will be able to find out what action is required to overcome those problems. So, let us say the first problem is poor running characteristics of the material. What does it mean poor running characteristics? That means, the machine is stopping too frequently due to multiple reasons could be there. And therefore, frequent stoppages mean loss of production and a lot of irritation for the operator also who is working on the machine. He will be overwhelmed with the extra work that he has to do to set the machine right, which is a very frustrating experience for the operator as well. So, poor running characteristics means loss of productivity as well as waste generation as well as uh, operation difficulty for the operators. Okay. So, what could be the reasons? The reasons can be classified into three groups fiber, process and machine related problems could be there. There is a list of problems or reasons which are stated here. Running cast tax is poor, it could be because of honeydew in cotton, inadequate spin finish on synthetic fibers or poor quality of spin finish, too fine a fiber, too low or too high cream, high bulk, low moisture content. These are all fiber related issues about problems. If we go to process, it could be in appropriate settings. Settings between the rollers are not conforming the length of the fibers or the bulk of the materials that I am going to process. High speed, the speed could be too high, not suitable for the fibers that I am processing. Too much or too less humidity, both are bad. For every process, there is an optimum humidity. On the draw frame also, if I are processing cotton or viscose, there is certain humidity that we need, some temperature that we need. If I are processing synthetic fibers like polyesters 100 percent or acrylic or nylon or the art blend, then there is a different humidity and temperature that we need. So, we have to be very careful about the humidity part also. So, humidity too good, too low, too high, uh, both are bad. Too low means there could be static generation and which may lead to lapping and therefore, stoppage. Too high humidity means fibers keeps on absorbing a lot of moisture and they try to stick on the machine parts. Too low humidity means there will be low cohesion between fibers, a lot of fluff will be generated uh, because cohesion between the fibers is low, especially with fibers which are hygroscopic in nature like cotton or viscose. So, both are bad and the other thing is poor condition of the roller. What does it mean? Surface cracks, grooves filled with deposits, dust, spin finish. So, groups are no more active because they are all filled up 
and we have not cleaned the machine or there could be surface cracks on the top rollers. All these may lead to poor running characteristics and therefore, we have to first find out which one out of these is really responsible for poor running characteristics of the machine. And once we have identified that it is because of fiber or because of the process or because of the humidity or because of some problem with the machines, then once that is identified, then solutions can be immediately given. The next one is lapping. Okay. So, lapping I have already discussed about lapping. Lapping is wrapping of the drafted fleece around the rollers, especially bottom rollers or top rollers and that this, this is this wrapping continuously is known as lapping. See this machine speed is very, very high and therefore, even if there is a lapping for few seconds, there will be a wrap of fibers around the around the rollers and this is going to make the roller diameter so big that sometimes the rollers may simply bend also. So, therefore, there are lapping detectors which will detect the lapping and immediately stop the machine. Anyway, the lapping could be because of static generation in the case of synthetic fibers due to inadequate spin finish low humidity, smear of spin finish, the spin finish is getting removed from the surface of the fiber. That means, it is not adhering well with the surface of the fibers and then they can smear it out and they will be deposited on the parts of the machine and it will be a sticky material because there will be temperature, the rollers will be heated as we run the machine and the stack sticky material will now catch the fibers and therefore, the fibers will start wrapping. Long and fine fibers because of their low bending rigidity, low crimp in synthetic fibers reduce spreadability and that can also lead to lapping. Splitting tendency of the wave due to low cohesion and when the cohesion become less for hygroscopic fibers, it is because of low relative humidity and for hydrophobic fibers, the cohesion is low if the spin finish is not correct, then the cohesion could be low or the fibers may repel each other if there is a generation of static electricity. Electricity, static electricity will be the same similar nature, the fibers will repel, the slivers also may repel from each other this possibilities are there with synthetic fibers. Poorly maintained rollers as already discussed in the previous case, cuts or cracks on the roller surface, sticky material deposit on the rollers, anything related to the roller also may lead to lapping. The other processing problem that we face is trumpet blockage and thereby the machine stops. The trumpet is blocking the material, trumpet is getting choked with the fibers. Reasons fibers related spin finish deposition due to smear, excessive moisture, static charge generation, too much variation in sliver mass. So, too much variability in sliver mean, mass means the thick part of the slivers will not be able to pass through the uh, bore of the trumpet. The trumpet board should be able to accommodate a thick region, a thin region can easily pass through, but from the average if the mass goes up beyond 25 percent or 30 percent, then there is going to be a problem because the material may not be able to pass through the trumpet, the trumpet will get choked and therefore, there will be breakage, there will be discontinuity of the operations. Splitting from sliver, accumulation of fibrous dust, 
if the dust is deposited within the trumpet, then a time may come when it will get completely choked with dust and fibers. The other one is too narrow trumpet board. The trumpet board selection has gone wrong. Suppose by mistake, we have not changed the trumpet board, we have changed the saliva linear density. Or earlier we were processing some other form fiber viscose ion only, and suddenly due to some reason we have decided to process suppose a blend, viscose and let us say polyester. And polyester percentage is more and therefore now the saliva has become very bulky and there may be some change in saliva linear density. Now any such situations may lead to uh, trumpet being choked with fibers because bulky material may not be able to pass through the trumpet board unless we choose a trumpet board of appropriate size. So there are uh, guidelines given by the machine manufacturers that if this is the count of saliva, then this is the board that you have to choose. All right. The other problem is drafting problem. This is very, very great problem, drafting problem. Drafting problem basically means that we may find the saliva to be highly non-uniform in nature. There are a lot of thick and thin regions coming out in the saliva. Earlier, a saliva wave was visible in the old generation draw frames. People could go and see, but in today's generation draw frames are running at such a high speed that it is very difficult to see the structure of the wave. Anyway, the drafting problem could be again due to inadequate spin finish leading to high interfiber friction. Part of the spin finish is to reduce friction because there is a lubricating agent in the spin finish especially with synthetic fibers. There could be high crimp, very high crimp and may lead to what springs means that the fiber is going to behave like a spring within the drafting zone. And if the spring is stretched, energy is stored and if the spring, one end of the spring is released, the spring will retract fast. This has been discussed earlier that crimpy fiber behave just like a spring within the drafting zone. So if I take a spring and stretch it and then I release one end, the other end will, other end being gripped, the spring will retract very fast. This is going to happen with the fibers if they are too crimpy in nature. We expect that the synthetic fiber will lose their crimp by the time they come to the draw frame stage because the cream that we give to the fiber is semi permanent in nature. We need cream for carding operations. To separate the fibers from each other, cream helps. To create a wave which will be little strong, also we need cream because cream of the fibers help to interlock the fibers and thereby it gives some amount of strength to the wave that is carded wave and therefore the requirement of crimp is there especially for carding machine. Once the carding is over, we have produced a saliva, there is no need of any crimp now. Now crimp is a nuisance. So crimp till carding stage is important for us. Cream beyond carding is a nuisance for us. It's better to not have any cream. Therefore, synthetic fiber manufacturers produces cream, which is known as semi-permanent in nature. That means by the time it has gone through the carding machines and fibers have been opened by the blow room machines, most of the creams will be removed so that fibers can slide past each other easily without 
giving drafting problem. The for cotton there is a problem because we all know that every cotton fiber or any variety of cotton fibers will have lot of short fibers with them. Cotton is not like synthetic fibers where all the fibers are of same length. It contains lot of short fibers and by the definition of short fiber is generally any fiber less than 12 millimeter in length is considered to be short fibers in our case from the spinning point of view and from the yarn point of view also. Why do you say them short fibers? Because these fibers actually do not contribute towards the strength of the fiber, strength of the yarn. So, from the point of view of strength of the yarn, fibers length less than 12 millimeter are not going to have any effect. They only contribute towards mass. And these fibers in the drafting zone creates problem in terms of problem is that they create what is known as drafting wave. Since these fibers becomes floating fibers in the drafting zone and their movement becomes highly unpredictable in nature. And hence they create what is known as drafting wave or mass variation in the final fibers. So, for cotton the short fibers presents may lead to drafting problem. Process narrow or wide setting in the break draft zone. So, in the break draft zone the drafting force is very high because the mass of material is very high. By the time it comes to the front zone the mass has reduced, but in the back zone the mass is equivalent to almost 6 slivers or 8 slivers. And here if the settings are narrow force is going to be very high. If the setting is too wide then there is a chance of generation of drafting wave even in the back zone itself. Though the wave that generates it also depends upon the extent of draft. Draft is less in the back zone, but setting between the rollers is wider in the back zone and therefore, there is a possibility that if I keep the wide setting there is a risk of generation of drafting wave. If I keep a very narrow setting there is a risk of pulling the fibers long fibers which may be simultaneously nipped by uh, in between the uh, nips of the back and the middle roller. So, wide setting is bad, narrow setting is also bad or the force may rise very high in the case of narrow setting fibers like will be plucked from the nip of the back pair of rollers all sort of things may happen. High bulk is also detrimental here and too much of humidity will also increase the drafting force in the back zone and also may cause your material to stick. So, all these process related problems could be there. The other one is damage to the roller surface or eccentric roller. We have discussed about the eccentric roller and its influence. Roller surface being damaged also can lead to drafting related problems. And not only that it fibers will stick to it, it can also may not be able to pull the fibers if there is part of the part of the surface is damaged due to some reasons. And when the damaged part is coming in contact with the bottom roller, the pressure is not getting properly transmitted to the fibers and therefore, fibers may not be able to be pulled properly by the damaged roller surface. The other one is the thermal damage. Thermal damage is possible only with synthetic fibers. See cotton has no melting point, viscose rayon has no melting point. Therefore, cotton and viscose rayon this is these fibers are not going to be affected 
by heat. We have already discussed that the draw frames when they run, lot of heat is generated because there is a continuous abrasion between the fibers and the roller. Due to this abrasion, the friction is there and frictional heat gets generated. So, continuous abrasion means lot of generation of heat and this heat is going to increase the temperature of the drafting rollers. So, anything that will increase friction between the fibers and that is possible if the spin finish is not correct, then the friction between the fibers is going to be very high synthetic fibers and that could be very high friction between the fiber and the machine part. So, we use titanium dioxide on polyester fibers to control their brightness. This titanium dioxide, this is not good for the rollers. Rollers get damaged there is abrasion damage because of presence of too much of TIOT on the fibers. So, for one purpose we need titanium dioxide, but at the same time we also should know that too much of this titanium dioxide may lead to abrasive damage of the top rollers where we have synthetic rubber cover. And the, it is so thermal heat will be generated when the friction is very, very intense because of very high coefficient of friction between fibers or when the speeds of operation is very high. Then also the generation of heat is going to be very high. The other thing is narrow trumpet bore or coiler tube or dirty trumpet. So, there is a tremendous abrasion between the fibers and the inner wall of the trumpet because there is a very narrow passage and we have made it deliberately narrow because we want to compress the sliver so that we can increase the strength of the sliver. We want to transform the sliver from a sheet to a round shape and therefore, we need a trumpet which is conical geometrically and there is a narrow bore. So, that lot of compressive pressure develops. So, there is a lot of abrasion there also and hence if the bore is not of right diameter, then intensity of the abrasion is going to be very high and therefore, lot of heat will be generated there also. So, generation of continuous heat because of friction will raise the temperature of these parts and they can damage the fibers, especially fibers which are susceptible to heat. So, heating of top rollers may reach 80 degree centigrade affecting the viscosity of the spin finish. While running it may not affect the fiber as contact time is too short, but when the machine stops it may cause damage to the fibers. Even if the damage is restricted to 1 or 2 centimeter, it will affect 5 to 50 meter of yarn and the defects become visible only after dying. So, these statements are very important that is one is the temperature could be as high as 80 degree centigrade and its components which are used in spin finish, it may not, may not be able to bear such a temperature. So, viscosity of the spin freeze is going to change and it means the frictional behavior of the fiber is going to change. The other thing is that the fibers are coming into contact with the machine parts which is suppose 80 degree centigrade. So, in normal circumstances it may not matter because the material is running at a very high speed. Typically the speed of a draw frame 
while running on synthetic fibers could be let us say 500, 400, 450 meters per minute. That means per minute it is going almost half a kilometer. So if the machine stopped due to any reason, due to lapping, due to slider break, whatever it could be, then it will be in contact with the heated part for a certain period of time. And the region of the slider which is in contact with the machine part which is already at 80 degrees centigrade, that part of the slider is going to get damaged. There is going to be some kind of internal damage to the fibers because I am hitting it, it is receiving heat from the part of the machines. So, even though it is restricted to 1 to 2 centimeter, the length of the yarn is going to be how much? You have to calculate the drop that we give to the sliver from sliver to yarn. So, typical drop that we give from sliver to yarn could be to the order of 200, 300, anything. So, if I multiply these two, 2 centimeter by 300, we get 600 centimeter and we convert it into meter, 600 centimeter divided by 100, that gives me 6. It could be 6 meter or it could be more, if the draft is more, we do not know. So, thermal damage is possible with synthetic fiber, this have to, have to keep in mind and therefore, what we do to avoid this thermal damage, to avoid the generation of static electricity, we reduce the speed when we process thermoplastic fibers on draw frame. You will see that the machine speed is brought down. We can run cotton or viscose at high speed or not synthetic fibers. All right. This is the process configuration So, what we see here that for coarse rotor span yarn, coarse rotor span yarn, what we give only one drop frame passage. So, we feed cut sliver and we give drain drawn sliver. We do not go beyond one. What is the reason? The rotor span yarn is coarse, that is, we are producing 6 count, 8 count, less than 10. Then, this on this yarn, there is not too much of demand of quality. So, whatever quality requirement is there, we can get that quality by giving one passage. By giving one passage, whatever parallelization we achieve, that parallelization we give me a yarn, by the time these fibers go into the rotor groove, there are a lot of change in the configuration of the fiber. You must know when if you are, when you learn about the rotor spinning system, you will find even though fibers in the feed sliver is very, very is highly parallel or oriented free from hooks, but by the time I open them out on rotor spinning machine and feed the material and it goes and gets deposited within the rotor groove, there is a lot of change in the configuration of the fibers. We again create hooked fibers and therefore, there is not much need to uh, improve the parallelization or orientation of the fibers in the feed slivers that we feed to the rotor spinning machine. And hence, we give one drop frame passage. But it has been also seen that if we want to produce little, little finer counts, not 6, 8, 10, but if we want to produce 16, 18, then it is better to give two drop frame passages because that whatever you know, improvement we get in the fibers in the drawn sliver, that helps to bring down the end breakage rate. That is why uh, for coarse rotor span yarn, one passage is sufficient. If I go for little finer rotor span yarns, then we should go for two passages. All right. Otherwise, if I want to go for carrier yarn, the next we give two passages 
first passage and second passage. Two passages will reduce both type of hooks as we have discussed earlier, leading hooks, trailing hooks, and it will give you sufficient parallelization of fibers and orientation of fibers. However, suppose we go for a for vortex yarn production, then we give three drop frame passages. We are not satisfied with two, we go for one more. Why? We want to improve the uniformity of this fiber, which also we can improve by having this is auto leveler, but we ought to also improve the parallelization of this fiber, the orientation of fibers in this fiber, because here the fiber is directly fed to the vortex sealing machine. There is no roving frame to further improve the orientation of the fibers. So, we for feeding sliver to a drafting unit like vortex yarn spinning, we need fibers to be highly oriented free from hooks in the feed sliver itself and this is only possible if we go for one more passage of draw frame and therefore, in this situation we can go for three passages. So, depending upon the type of yarn you have to produce and type of technology you are going to use, we have to choose the number of passages. That is all and thank you.